In today's show, I'm looking at players in fantasy basketball who could be considered buy low options. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today we're looking at buy low options for trades. Now, again, disclaimer, because there's always new people watching and new people listening. These are not Everybody who is a buy low option, this does not mean go out and buy this player or trade for this player at what your your perceived value is for them in the coming months. It means if you can get them on the cheap, you do it. If you can't, if you have to pay top dollar, if you have to pay best case scenario, don't do it. It's It really is a simple thing. And I know people in fantasy love trading. It's the number one thing that everyone wants to do is to trade and trade and trade. But making mistakes in trading can be absolutely detrimental to your team. So these guys... They're currently underperforming, but just watch what you're giving up in these situations. And now that I've given that positive preamble, let's talk about these players and start off with category leagues. I think Marcus Smart is someone who's being undervalued. He's the 108th ranked player over the course of the season, but over the last two weeks, he's the 245th ranked player on a per game basis. Why is that? Now, people will, there are people who are asking me whether they drop Marcus Smart and they're super worried because Kemba Walker's back. The reason he's performing like this is not because of Kemba Walker. It's because he's shooting 29% from the field and he's shooting 72% from the line and 20% from three. And you can criticize Marcus Smart and he's shooting all you want and that's that's totally fine. But nobody is this bad. No, he is not a 20% three-point shooter. He is not a 39% two-point shooter. And he isn't a 72% free-throw shooter. He has been at over 80% for the last two seasons. Um, he did have one year, weirdly, in 17-18, where he was at 72%, 73%, but he was 81% the year prior to that. So he's had three of the last four years of over 80% from the line. Um, there is going to be a bounce back there. And that field goal percentage, while it's not going to be 50%, he's not going to become that good, but he'll go from 29 up to 38 to 39 to 40, maybe 41 in absolute best case scenario. He had a year two years ago where he's a 42% shooter. Uh, he's getting us you know, one and a half steals. He's averaging 5.6 assists, although that has come down over the last two weeks. He's hitting his threes still in terms of volume, but there's more to, more to come there. I think Smart is easily a top 100 player this year, but that last two-week ranking of outside the top 240 would, uh, would tell you there is a little bit of buy-low value there in him. Trey Young was on this show last week. He's still on this show at this point. Um, he is, at the time of me recording this, currently playing in a game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Over the last two weeks, Trey is the 164th ranked player. That's not what you want for the bloke that you took at pick number nine in your drafts. And why is he so low? Well, like Marcus Smart, he's shooting 29.6% from the field. He's shooting 20, uh, 92 from the line, which is great, but weirdly, only 5.6 attempts. Last year, he was at 9.3. So the free throws have gone way down for Trey. The usage is down under 29% as well. He's averaging just 15 points with 7.8 assists. Now, he's never going to get steals. We know that. But 0.83s for Trey Young. This guy hit 3.4 last year. He's shooting his threes at 15% over the last five games, 27% over the course of the season. What this tells me, and Trey Young is not a great three-point shooter, but he's a great high-volume three-point shooter, is that he is going to have a prolonged stretch of shooting 40% from three to get that back to like 33 34%. His two-pointers, which are at 46%, 45%, they were at 50 last year. So he's going to have a stretch of shooting 50% from two. The assists will jump back up. The free throws will jump back up. Now, he might not get to be the number nine ranked player, over the course of the season. He might not even be a top 20 player, especially with how the usage is being distributed on this team. And we hit a usage of 36 last year, and it's down this year to 32. So that's going to cause him maybe to be in that 14 to 18 sort of range. But he's not the player that he is 
over the last two weeks. And when you're buying low on Trey, you send a guy who's like a top 30 player. You package together two top 50 players, maybe. Maybe you don't even have to do that. Maybe you package two top 70 players to get him. Like if you could send a, let's say, Chris Middleton. I know Middleton's playing well at the moment. But if you could send Middleton and Buddy Heald for Trey Young, you know, that, that's that's something I would do. Now, I'm loathe to offer you know, many multiplayer trades because, again, the vast, vast majority of you won't have those same two players on your team. But even if you want to look at someone like a like a perfect example of who you would trade for Trey Young if he was healthy would be uh, Colin Sexton, but because he's healthy, that doesn't count. D'Angelo Russell plus would be something I'd look at. Darren Fox had a hot game the other day. You, I would inquire Darren Fox plus to get Trey Young. That's the sort of moves that I would make. The next player we've got on here is Mike Conley, who started out the season really well. Now, this isn't a massive buy low, but over the last two weeks, he's only playing 29 minutes a game. He's the 92nd ranked player. He's shooting under 43% from the field and unbelievably 55% from the free throw line. Conley, like Smart, has been a 80% guy, but unlike Smart, Conley's done it forever. The last eight years, he's been over 80% from the line. He's at 69 this year and 55 over the last seven games. So we just all, we just put that back in, like we just get that those uh, free throws in, and you could get another one and a half points per game onto his total there. He's averaging seven assists in the last seven. Give him an extra two minutes or so, and you're going to be back to being a sixteen and seven and a half guy with one point six deals, and those percentages coming back up. It's just a really really weird situation for Conley in his free throws being down this year, and they're getting worse. They will get better. I feel pretty confident in saying that. And the shooting numbers will get better, and then he'll play instead of 29 minutes. The Jazz have been involved in a lot of blowouts. Instead of being playing 29 minutes, his minutes will, will jump back up. And in fact, over the last, you know, what, seven games, he's had four or five blowouts that he's been involved in, and that has dropped a lot of his numbers down and a lot of his, uh, lot of his uh, playing time down. The next guy we take a look at is uh, Steph Curry. Yes, Steph Curry. Um, not He's not at the... Um, not at the peak of his powers, and in large part, that's to do with games against the Raptors and the Indiana Pacers that were mixed in there. Um, I think Steph is still going to be a top 10 player this year, but you might be able, this is probably a harder one to do. You might be able to get him at a cheaper rate. The last two weeks, the 32nd ranked player, averaging 30 to 23 points per game, which I think is, is well down from what he's going to average for the rest of the year. 42 from the field, well down on what he's going to average. 80% from the line, well down on what he's going to average as well. Um, and you know, under six assists, which I think you'll be able to get back up as well. I think Steph can be a top three to five player for the rest of the season. Now, again, when you're trading for Steph Curry, you're not giving up a top five player to get him. You're looking at people who are worried about his fragile ankles. You're looking for people who are worried about the Warriors are trash and they're going to shut him down. You're worried about the people who are like, well, Steph can't do anything because there's no one else on that team offensively. They're the people you're looking to target. So, hey, go and find your league mate's social media and find them trolling Steph and then try and trade him there. Again, it's probably going to have to be a two-for-one deal to get Steph Curry back in a trade, but throw a Fred Van Vliet in there. Throw Fred Van Vliet and Devin Booker, perhaps. Yeah, throw a couple of players in to get Steph because his current slump based on his free throws, and I say he's shooting 80%, which guys like Conley and Smart would be killing for, but Steph's a 90% free throw guy. He has been over 90% for three consecutive years, and if we and if we don't include the 16-17 season, which I'm not, where he was at 89.8, say I do include that, he's been at over 90% for six consecutive seasons. So shooting 80% from the last five games is an anomaly. He's at 93% over the course of this year. So there is, yeah, obviously, that's going to bounce back. The last guy we look at for category leagues is the headmaster, Jamal Murray, who is the 136th ranked player over the last two weeks. Only under 18 points, shooting 42. And like Curry, he's an excellent free throw shooter that for some reason is at 76% on the season and 76% over the last two weeks. He's shooting just 32% from three. And again, like Trey Young, he's not the greatest 40% three-point shooter, but he is a good to great high volume three point shooter and at 32% he needs to be 35 to 36%. So that can improve. His assists aren't really going to change that much. Um but his scoring should, but most importantly that efficiency will change and he'll get back to being a 70 to 80 ranked player. He's way down the numbers at the moment. So you look at maybe someone who wants to take a flyer on, yeah, you know, Kobe White 
I, I'd trade him for for him. But it's, I think it's more a, a lot of you're looking for two for ones is probably the best way to do it. Find those players who are overvalued. Shake Milton is a great name to throw in there to look to to deal away uh, or to deal for Jamal Murray. Let's look now at points leagues. Lonzo Ball, my number one sell uh, sell high, my number one buy low for points leagues. Lonzo is the 197th ranked player over the last two weeks. He's only played two games, but in large part, it's to do with the knee problem, which people are going to be panicking on. Now, I don't think you should view it as Lonzo as anything more than really a top 100 player in a points league, but there is still value in him. He will come back. He'll be able to put up numbers. His assists are woefully low this year, 4.4 per game, and I'm not sure that they get back to the level of seven or seven and a half or anything like that that he's had in the past, but I'm pretty confident they're going to be getting better than what they currently are but with his current knee problem you can get him at an extraordinarily cheap value at the moment Lonzo Ball um I think I am a TH T to the H yeah TH for life let's talk about Tobias Harris the thick hogsman who over the last two weeks is down at the 78th rank spot now a couple of weeks ago he was on the Sal High podcast and if I didn't mention this, there definitely would be someone who would come on here and, Josh, you hit him as a boy low. Sell high, now he's a boy low. Wake up your mind. This is exactly how it works. When someone is outperforming their production, you sell high. And when someone is uh, underperforming their production, you buy low. Pretty straightforward stuff. Harris, over the last two weeks, is averaging 31 fantasy points per game. He's at 36 over the course of the season. He should be a 35-point-per-game guy the majority of the time. So he's just a little bit down. The, the defensive numbers are coming back to where they've been in his career. That's to be expected. But his rebounds are well down. Five and a half rebounds over the last four games, 18 points per game, which I think he can average a little bit more than. But getting that extra five or six points per game from the Thick Hogsman, I think we can do that. And maybe he can push back to being a top 50 player in a fantasy points league. Next, we're looking at another player who's injured, and that is the Padawan, Colin Sexton. Now, this is the, the major reason I'm looking at him as a buy low is just because he's been out for this long. His production is fine. He's averaging 36 points per game over the course of the season, but people will start to panic on the ankle injury. They'll also look at him as somewhat of... Some people will look at him as a bit of a sell-high option. See, I don't necessarily think that because I think his production and what he's, what he's doing at the moment is relatively sustainable, but people panicking about the ankle injury, the fact that he hasn't played since the 6th of January... Uh, missing the last five games is got to be of some concern. So you throw out a, a player who's an 80 to 90 ranked player, try to mitigate that concern of the other player by giving them back a good guy, but someone who's not going to be quite as good as Sexton. And maybe you take on a hit for another couple of games in terms of his injury. The Thick Hogsman's teammate, Ben Simmons, is the 51st ranked player in points leagues over the last two weeks, averaging 36 points per game, 11 uh, points, 9 assists, 8 rebounds. It's the scoring that's the real issue here with Simmons, who's down under 20% usage for the first time in his career. But I think he can get back to at least pushing to be a 40 fantasy point per game guy. Maybe that's being a little bit too extreme, considering he's only at 39 for the year, but 40 is not too much higher than that, is it? I think we've seen his steal numbers be quite low this year as well. Uh, the minutes are fine. I'm a little worried about his knee. I'm not going to lie about that, but he is back and he is playing. But his current level of production is a little bit under where we expect it to be. The last guy we look at is Anthony Davis who's been a bit of a disappointment. He is averaging just 46 fantasy points per game over the last two weeks, 44 over the course of the season, and that ranks him 21st in points leagues. I think he is a clear top 10 player. Um, the minutes are down. He's averaging under 32 over the season, under 31 over the last six games, 22 points per game only, eight rebounds per game, which is low. The blocks are starting to come back up, which was a real concern earlier in the season. I just find it hard to think that Davis will play 30 minutes a night and average 21 points per game over the course of the season. I think there is some real room for that to jump up. His 24 usage is also a little bit worrying. He was at 29 last year. I think that will start to improve for Davis. And again, if you're throwing a top 25 player at Anthony Davis, I think you're going to win in the long run. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Leave a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. All of that great stuff, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.